12 forts, 400 retractable guns, and a river. It was considered to be the most heavily fortified place in Europe. Germany had weapons the rest of the world couldn't compete with. The forts of Liege didn't stand a chance. Liege was the first obstacle in the von Schlieffenplan, and it was a huge obstacle. The biggest war in the history of mankind had begun. The von Schlieffen Plan was a military plan created by Ge German General Alfred von Schlieffen as a defense plan for if France ever attacked Germany. But Schlieffen was fired by Wilhelm I and replaced with a man named Helmuth von Moltke, who had other ideas for the plan. Von Moltke transformed the defensive plan into a plan of offensive attack. Germany would attack France through neutral Belgium to take Paris. They also would attempt to take over St. Petersburg, Russia. The crazy part? Germany expected this to happen in 42 days. Liege was the first obstacle in the von Schlieffen plan, and it was a huge obstacle. The first battle of the Great War, the Battle of Liege. Now, Liege was not some pushover city that Germany could blast through before lunch. In fact, it was considered to be the most heavily fortified place in Europe. Located on the German-Belgian border, Liege was the gateway to Belgium. The city was across the Meuse River on top of a 500-foot slope. In addition, 12 heavily armed forts along a 30-mile circumference also surrounded Liege. Six forts lay in front of the city, and the other six across the river and behind Liege. And in the middle lay the citadel. Twelve forts, more hundred retractable guns, and a river. And the Belgians didn't make crossing the river any easier for the Germans. They collapsed all but two of the bridges spanning the Meuse. However, Germany was overconfident. They expected an easy battle and to have Liège in two days. And on August 4th, the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd German armies were positioning themselves to move into Belgium. That equated to 1.5 million soldiers marching towards Paris. On August 5th, the 2nd army of 320,000 men was sent in to take Liège. Belgium had only 70,000 soldiers, but they had their forts. When Germany asked for surrender, Liege refused. On the night of August 5th, overconfident Germany attacked with 30,000 men. A man named Paul Hamulus said, quote, People who went near the forts later on said they had seen the Germans lying in a heap, six and seven deep, wounded and killed mixed inextricably together, so numerous that their names and numbers could not possibly be collected. Germany failed, miserably. They made no progress and sustained heavy losses, and Liege still stood. After the first failure on August 7th, the Germans called on Zeppelins to drop bombs in Liege and the Citadel. Later, they advanced on the Citadel, which surrendered. Germany now had control of the city and the intact bridges across the Meuse. On August 8th, two more forts fell in the east. Then on August 12th, Germany brought in the secret weapon, Big Bertha. Big Bertha was the largest and most powerful piece of heavy artillery in the world. Basically, Big Bertha was a very large and incredibly destructive cannon. The forts of Liege didn't stand a chance against Big Bertha. An American journalist named Irving Cobb from the Saturday Evening Post saw the battle and said of Big Bertha, quote, For where a 42 centimeter shell falls, it does more than merely alter landscape. Almost, you might say, it alters geography. The forts of Liege were made from concrete in the 1880s. When the idea of reinforced concrete was still something somewhat new, the concrete forts of Liege were not reinforced and crumbled easily. The dust produced from these crumbling forts would choke the Belgium soldiers inside. The forts surrendered one by one after Big Bertha arrived. On August 13, six more forts had been destroyed and the Belgian general was found unconscious and captured by the Germans. The last two forts surrendered on August 16th, and Liege was taken. But did Germany truly win the battle? They had planned for the taking of Liege to take two days, and it ended up taking 12. Valuable time if you followed the von Schlieffen plan. Germany was supposed to be in St. Petersburg in 42 days. The time it took to take Liege also gave other armies more time to mobilize, making Germany's plan even harder to accomplish. 
Germany would continue on through Belgium, being attacked by Belgium sharpshooters and resistant citizens who continued to hold them up. Walter Blom, a captain in the German army, describes Germany's journey west through Belgium as, quote, We bought the morning papers at a wayside station and read, amazed of the experiences of those of our troops already across the Belgian frontier, of priest arms at the head of marauding bands of Belgian civilians committing every kind of atrocity, and putting the deeds of 1870 into the shade, of treacherous ambushes on patrols, and centuries found later with eyes pierced and tongues cut off, of poisoned wells and other horrors. Such was the first breath of war, full of venom that, as it were, blew in our faces as we rolled on towards it. Germany was able to take Liege, but at heavy losses and a huge amount of time lost. However, they also showed that they were a very large and very serious army. Germany had weapons the rest of the world couldn't compete with, and they had a mission. The biggest war in the history of mankind had begun.